Hi there and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing King of Thorns, written by Mark Lawrence. It's book two in the Broken Empires trilogy. It's grim dark fantasy, so it's very dark, very violent, a lot of dark themes going on in this story. So if grim dark fantasy is not your cup of tea, you may not like this book. But this book has an amazing protagonist called George, and He's very unique as a character. He's just constructed so brilliantly, I think, in this book and the first book as well in the trilogy. He's not a nice character at all, so he's easy to dislike, but you do like him, engage with him sometimes as well, because he just seems just very unique and entertaining as a character, despite being a complete sociopath. So that's the thing about the main character in this story. The author's created something that's so unique, this, to this character that's just so totally selfish, so totally bloodthirsty, that does things first, thinks later, and it just feels like this character is so unstable, so unpredictable. This character is just something I've not seen before in fantasy. So how did we get to book two? Well, in book one, our main character, George, he is, was around 14 years old, I think. And it starts off with him being on the road, leading a group of mercenaries, basically, called the Brothers. And they're starting off in a scene where they're destroying a small town or hamlet or something. And then he decides to go back home to his father's castle, because he's a prince. And nobody in this band of brothers knows he's a prince, but they're soon going to find out. He's going back there because he wants revenge on his father, because in the past... His mother and his younger brother were set upon by an assassin and they were murdered. George survived and his father didn't retaliate. So George hates his father now for that action and George ran away from home basically in a tantrum. And he took some prisoners with him from the dungeon in the castle and they became the band of brothers. And George got shaped on the road basically. He's very violent, very bloodthirsty, just full of anger, full of hatred for the world as a whole nearly, and he wants vengeance on his father. So the whole first book is about that, it's about him getting revenge on his father or getting revenge on the person who killed his mother, getting revenge on the whole world basically it seems. And it also opens up a whole background story of these mages that are pulling the strings behind rulers in this nation. This nation that has a hundred rulers, a hundred different small nations, small kingdoms that are always fighting, always trying to vie for power, vie for control. And these mages are pulling the strings. And George finds out about that. And that also sets him off into a different kind of subplot in that first book. And that carries on in this book as well. So by the end of the first book, George had his own kingdom because he destroyed another kingdom. And then he set about getting revenge on the person that killed his mother and his younger brother. And we start off in this second book with the fact that he achieves that and he's taken over from his uncle because his uncle was responsible for the death of his mother and younger brother. So George now is a king of his own kingdom. And this second book is all about him trying to protect that kingdom from an invading force. We have three different timelines or storylines in this story. The first is the present day, and it's two things going on in the present day storyline. It's his wedding day, he's getting married, and on the, on the day of his wedding, he's got an invading force coming. And the invading force is a land of, called Arrow, and it's led by the Prince of Arrow. And this army, this invading army, is massive compared to the forces George has in his little kingdom. So it's like 20,000 men against his force of a few thousand, I think. And it's all about him trying to protect his homeland, to protect his people from this invading force, because he wants to become emperor of all the lands. And to do that, he has to hold on to being king. The second storyline is four years in the past. So the main storyline in present time is four years ahead, where he's 18, and the other storyline is when he's still 14. And 
that pastoral line is about him going on some sort of quest basically. It starts off being a quest to help this little character in the book who is almost like a fire mage who controls fire but he can't control it very well and he sets things alight all the time, sometimes in his sleep. So George is a bit worried about that one. He's worried about dying by fire. He's worried somebody will kidnap this little creature and use this creature against him. And also, selfishly, he wants to find out how to control this creature for his own needs. So they're the reasons for the quest in the beginning. Then there's other things going on in that quest as well. And it's he's travelling to different areas where his relatives are, and he wants to shore up support with people, build alliances, because he's developing as a character, and coming to understand that he may need help from other people to reach his dreams as being emperor. And it's not all about acting first and then thinking later. He can't get everything he wants through violence, he's going to realise. Even though he's still very violent and very bloodthirsty, he's still quite evil as a character. He does realise that he needs other alliances, other help, to get where he wants to go. So that's the two main storylines in this book. The other storyline is diary entries, and they're very small entries in this book. They're written by a character called Catherine, and Catherine is George's step aunt. And we met Catherine in book one. And George is fascinated by Catherine. He desires her, basically. But they don't have a good history in the brief history they do have. Because in book one, a few things went on. And there's a bit of antagonistic attitude between Catherine and George in book two as well. And we learn more about Catherine as a character in this book. What she's capable of. And what she learns after book one. And that's all told through her diary entries. Now, I don't think the diary entry part added much to the book, really. Added a tiny bit, but it could have taken those out and wouldn't have changed anything. If you want Catherine's storyline in the story, we should have just got normal chapters with Catherine's point of view. The diary entries, I think, are just worthless. And that's a bias from me, because I find when people do that at diary entry scene, I just think it's boring. I just don't like it. I don't enjoy it. And I think there's better ways of bringing characters into a storyline rather than having diary entries. Because this feels a bit cute, especially in a book like this, which is grim dark fantasy. Now, I don't want to go into too deeply in the past storyline especially because so many things in that past storyline you will find tying into the present day storyline as the book progresses. So I don't want to give away how that happens because part of the enjoyment of this story is seeing those connections and just getting to know that it's not random things going on in that past storyline. There's a purpose. So I did like that in this story. I like that fact that there's all these links between the two storylines because it just seems like this book was so well planned and so well controlled by the author. This book is full of some amazing scenes. And we have some battles, both physical and magical. But we do learn a bit about the magic in this world later on in this story. And what you do learn is quite a surprise. I won't give away what you do learn in this book, but it is quite surprising. But anyway, there's some great scenes. There's daring scenes, there's adventure, there's daring escapes, there's scenes where plans are thought of, you know, in an instant, and we don't know if they'll succeed or not. There's many scenes where we don't know if everybody survives or not, and that's quite thrilling in this story. So the author mixes up the whole pace of the book with those thrilling scenes. But I think the pace overall is quite slow in some sections, and I didn't enjoy that fully. I thought the pace in book one was much better. Book two seems a bit drawn out in some sections, and I wonder if that just feels like the publishers told the author, extend some scenes, you know, pad it out a bit more, get some more pages in this book. That's what it felt like in some of this story, because some of those slow scenes do drag on for too long. And I think when you compare it to book one, Book one was just so gripping and so engaging all the way through. This book, I found myself in some sections page hunting, not skipping pages, but by but looking to see how many pages I had to go in the story. And that's a sign that some scenes weren't working for me. So despite so many good things in the story, so many things I enjoyed, there's one thing that bugged me, and that's all the dream sequences in this story. I think sometimes dream sequences do work. I liked all the dream scenes in Wheel of Time, for instance. They were well done. They made so much sense to the story because they were so crucial to the whole structure of the story and crucial to the world building as well. 
but all the dream sequences in this book just felt a bit strange to me. They didn't seem like they fit the story overall, the whole feel of the story, the whole atmosphere. They just felt out of place. I think pull them out of this story and it wouldn't make any impact. So for me, that whole dream sequence thing in this book was a bit of a miss and did affect my overall enjoyment of this story overall. So first off, Catherine. And we first met Catherine in book one, and she's George's step-aunt. In book one, she was a bit of a mixed character for me. She had some good scenes, and she felt quite engaging as the book went on. In the second book, she's changed. She's darker. She's more violent. She's also full of revenge, and in some ways she feels like a female version of George in many aspects. I thought Catherine in book two was engaging as a character, despite the fact that we learn all about her in book two through these diary entries mainly. And I think that's a, a mistake by the author. I think just normal chapters with Catherine's point of view would have been better. But we learn some interesting things about Catherine and some things that I think will play out in book three even more. I won't tell you everything about what we learn in book two. What we do learn is she develops some sort of powers and they're quite powerful and she feels very skilled and that makes her feel more darker and more dangerous as this story goes on as well because what she is now is a threat and it seems like a big threat in this world and a big threat to George our main character. Gog is a character I want to mention as well because I think he's a standout in this book and we met Gog in book one. Now Gog is Olacrota, there are a group of people, almost like a race of people. And when George first came across this race of people, Gog, another child, they didn't have a name. So George named them both. Gog is a small creature that controls fire, but he doesn't control it all the time very well. So when he's asleep, in his dreams, he sets things on fire. And in some cases, he sets George's bedroom on fire in his castle. So George feels unsafe around him and he thinks they need to control it. They need to find a way that Gog can control his power. And that's it about that, that storyline in the past in this story when they go on that quest. Gog just is drawn as like a child in this book. He's a child character and he just has so much innocence and so much life in the story. He just feels like a child character and I think it was written very well. And what makes him stand out, he feels like a lighter element in the book set against all the darkness in the story. That contrast makes him stand out even more. So I think Gog was a brilliant character in this story. Biana is the young girl who's going to marry George in this story, in the present day storyline. She's interesting. Despite her being young, she feels like she's very ruthless and dark herself. She's got a very cunning mind and she sets about different things in this story to protect George, her new husband, and her new kingdom. I quite like Miana. She's very engaging as a character. I think she's written very well. That whole thing about her being young, but having all these dark thoughts, all these almost adult-like thoughts and schemes going on in her mind, and very quickly as well. She's very quick on her feet. She feels very strong as a character. She feels like a force of nature, really. You know, she feels like she's quite dangerous. And if you cross her, you just feel like she will just deal with anybody who crosses her with uh, quite a vicious nature, I think, a vicious streak. I think she's going to be a standout character in book three as well. I'm hoping she is anyway, because in this book, she feels like she's setting up as to be a very powerful character in this story. I did enjoy this book, not as much as the first book in the trilogy, but it's still a strong book. I rate it four out of five. And most of that rating is because of the character, George. This brilliant character that's so unique, that stands out so much in this series so far. And being a grim, dark fantasy, look, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's got a lot of dark themes in there. It feels quite evil, some of the themes that are in this story. George is a sociopath. He's very violent, very bloodthirsty. He does whatever he wants to get ahead in life, basically. He's learning a few other things in the story as he develops, but he's still quite violent and ruthless in this story. So not everybody's cup of tea as a book, but I enjoyed it very much, mainly because of that character who, despite being a sociopath and feels quite evil sometimes, is just so engaging in this book. On my channel, I review many fantasy books. If you enjoy fantasy, check out my channel and subscribe. 
On the screen now is a link to a video for another book I'm sure you'll enjoy.